sides. So let's say this quadrilateral is A, B, C, and D. So this is a rectangle. As I say, the first thing you are picking up is this side AB is equal to the side CD. So this pair of sides, they are equal. That's the first part. And the second part, the opposite pairs again, AC and BD, they are also equal. So that's the first part. Number one, we are looking at the pairs of sides. So the pairs of sides are equal. I think that so that's the first part when you're going what you, what you observe uh, with a quadrilateral. Hello, our most developed student. My name is Confident. Welcome to our lesson today. I'm looking at grade 10 learners and we are looking at the properties of a rectangle. And this is mainly where I'm going to teach you uh, if you are doing your grade 10 and introduce to you Euclidean geometry where it comes or where it concerns a rectangle. You definitely need to know that. So I'm going to do two lessons. The first one is going to focus on the properties of a rectangle and then the second one will look at the properties of a rhombus. This is what your curriculum or your syllabus requires you to know as you progress to your grade 11. So this topic is very, very important. As I say, I'm just teaching here. I'm not using previous papers. I'm not revising, but I'm just going to show you some of the things that are very important whereby it will help you answer some of the questions in Euclidean geometry. So let us look at the properties of a rectangle, as I said. Now, what is or what does a rectangle look like? The first thing you need to know about a rectangle is that it is a four-sided shape, meaning it is a quadrilateral. And then if you are to draw one, we are looking at something like that and something like that and something like that and i hope i'm making it equally so but it must be equal like that so this is a rectangle and we are saying there are properties here that you need to have when it comes to a rectangle so it is a four sided sided shape we call that a what a quadrilateral so i'll call it quad that's the first part the f and then being a quadrilateral and there are a few things you need to start uh, already picking up. The first thing is sides. So let's say this quadrilateral is A, B, C, and D. So this is a rectangle. As I say, the first thing you are picking up is this side AB is equal to the side CD. So this pair of sides, they are equal. That's the first part. And the second part, the opposite pairs again, AC and BD, they are also equal. So that's the first part. Number one, we are looking at the pairs of sides. So the pairs of sides are equal. I think that. So that's the first part when you're going, what, what you observe uh, with a quadrilateral. And the pairs of sides being equal, there is another important property of parallel. So you'll find that AB, you put that, is parallel to CD. That is, that's what it means when you're saying they are parallel. Uh, parallel lines are those that will never, or that are equidistant, or they are equal, and they will never meet. So AB is parallel to what? To CD. How do we write that? We say AB is parallel to CD. And then also, being AC and BD, we're going to indicate with double lines like that. We indicate with double lines, meaning AC also is also parallel to what? To BD. 
So you see that that's what we pick up when we are looking at what at a rectangle. Now there is another important property when you're dealing with the rectangle. It is the corners here. If you look at that angle and you look at that angle and you look at that angle and lastly you look at that angle it's a very special property when it comes to a rectangle that particular angle is a right angle meaning it is 90 degrees so you've got a 90 degrees there you've got a 90 degrees there so that's the most important property that makes it unique from other quadrilaterals remember you've got different quadrilaterals which are parallelograms a rhombus you've got a kite you've got a square you've got um a trapezium all those but this one has got a special property on the vertices or on the corners they make up 90 degrees are you with me so we have looked at um two things so this was number two and number three we said what um we said the vertices meaning the corners are 90 degrees so now that is very very important when it comes to that now let's look at what they call the diagonals so i'm going to sketch again our rectangle here let me sketch another rectangle we want to look at the diagonals because there's something special again when it comes to the diagonals of a rectangle so if i can have that as my rectangle again i keep on missing that line there so there it is so again we say this is a b c and d now let's look at the diagonals if we're talking about the diagonals we're talking about a line that starts from a to d that is a diagonal i think that and i can come up with another line that starts from c to b or from b to c these are called diagonals now what is special about these diagonals now take note when you have the meeting point there let's call that meeting point e we say the diagonals uh, they are going to bisect each other meaning this distance uh, here which i will call a e that distance is equal to that distance and that distance is equal to that distance are you seeing that meaning what it means a e is equal to e and uh, the way i'm writing e there is like an equal sign a e is equal to e d meaning not meaning a e d has been divided into two equal parts which is a e and e d when you're dividing a d into two equal parts we call it bisection so this a e d has been bisected into two parts which is a e and e d to bisect is to divide a line at its center and so we are saying a e is equal to e d but at the same time this is equal to c e which is equal to e b do you see that's a very important special uh, property so you have got a e being equal to uh, e d being equal to c e being equal to e b that's a very very special property when it comes to what to a rectangle we are saying the diagonals they bisect each other and they are equal in length so that is what you need to know so whenever you are dealing with a rectangle this is a properties that you need to know but at the same time i might have taken it for granted remember we said a b let me bring it back we say this side a b is equal to what i think we did mention that a b is equal to c d i think i did mention that and this side is equal to that side meaning a c is equal to what uh b and d so with that it is what we mean when we talk about a quadrilateral i mean a rectangle which is a quadrilateral so when they ask you in an exam to say you are supposed to prove the question is prove that a quadrilateral a quad is a rectangle 
what are you going to be uh, looking at? You're going to look at two properties. The first one, it is the one of diagonals. So I'm going to write the first one, focus on the diagonals. Diagonals. Remember what did you say about the diagonals? They bisect or they divide each other. So the diagonals bisect each other. That's what property we are having here. The diagonals, they bisect each other. That's the first important uh, properties. So when they bisect each other, meaning that they are equal. The diagonals, they are equal. Just like we did, we said what? We said AE is equal to ED, equal to CE is equal to EB. The second part that you need to say or to state when you're dealing with a um, quadrilateral, which is a rectangle, is this property of 90 degrees. To say, number two, the interior angle is equal to 90 degrees. So when you can prove that one of the interior angles is equal to 90 degrees, it means it is a rectangle. When you can prove that the diagonals bisect each other such that the diagonals are equal, it means that it is a rectangle. So this is the lesson, guys, I wanted to bring to you. They will be asking you in an exam to say prove that this parallelogram is a rectangle. So focus on the diagonals and focus on the angle there if it is 90 degrees. But of course, there are other things you can prove which are different now from um, in terms of not really different, but they are using the straight lines. For example, if I make this being one, two, this one, two, this one, two, and that one, two, you can now use things like alter alternate angles such that you can say that angle alternate angles remember this is parallel lines and uh, that is parallel lines look at the alternate angle i'm coming at i'm coming with to say here that line that the z angle i did talk about the alternate angles here such that this is equal to that i think that so you can come up with that thing to say a1 is equal to d2 that's one property there to say um, here A1, that's angle A1 is equal to angle D2. You can also look, use the same alternate angle. Look at this one, like this. You are all looking at the Z. And you have got that, uh, if I can use, you've got that, which is B1 is equal to that which is c2 so b1 is equal to c2 so those are things that you can bring about b1 is equal to c2 those are angles remember so these alternate angles you can also bring another one which is like that that this is the n it's n say that angle c1 is equal to that angle b2 so C1 is equal to B2. So you can come here and say uh, C1 is equal to B2. And then also, similarly, still using that property, you can use that. Uh, you can use that. The different alternate angles you could have come up with here. But um, for this purpose, just to illustrate a few things here, you see that? It's meaning A2 is equal to D1. i getting that. So A2 is equal to is equal to D, uh, D1. So, but these were things that I'm just bringing across. And there are many things to say. Uh, this is an isosceles triangle. If you can look at that triangle there, it is an isosceles triangle such that this angle is equal to that angle also that's at a1 is equal to b1 you know such things you can come up with a lot of things and a lot of concepts in this but i was just stretching the lesson now but the aim that i wanted to bring to you was number one when you're proving that the quadrilateral remember quad means four-sided the quadrilateral is a rectangle the first one to prove is the diagonals those 
lines that are crossing you can prove that they bisect or they divide each other at the center as well as the interior angle that angle is at 90 degrees so guys we've come to the end of our lesson in the next lesson i'm going to focus not on the what not on the rectangle but i'm going to focus on the what i want to focus here uh on the rhombus so uh take uh join me again when we look at the rhombus that is where we're going to look at the properties of a rhombus and yeah after that we can then look at some previous question papers which focuses on this kind these two shapes this the rectangle and the rhombus thank you